I think it is important to understand that um, we didn't choose to move during the pandemic um, because it was a pandemic, but that um, these plans to move have already been made um, many, many months ago. Because the original plan was that for us to, you know, relocate either me coming here to the UK or James going over to Singapore um, after our wedding, which was supposed to happen in June last year. But then because of, you know, COVID, everything had to be um, cancelled and pushed around. And, you know, it was very difficult living far um, apart from each other. Um, you know, the, the time difference, the distance, it was just very difficult. And so sometime in October, we decided, you know, let's move things forward. And at that time, um, things were starting to look a bit better. Singapore had moved into phase two and, you know, things were looking good. The vaccine was coming up maybe a few months later um, and the UK was looking good at that point. Um, so we applied for our visa. Um, I'll talk about the visa in another um, episode. But basically, due to the smaller amount of people applying for the visa, we actually got uh, a reply from the UK government really quickly. So by November, I already knew that I could come to the UK potentially by January. Um, and when I finally got my visa, um, everything sorted out in like December, late November or so, that's when everything kicked in. And one of the first things that I needed to do, um, apart from all the visa things, was to sort out my shipping because I had so many things. So let's see what are the things that I needed to pack and how packing went in Singapore and what the process was like. Boxes are here. I am so excited. Look at it. Look at it. Ta da! Yay! So we've got, um, so we've got like three types, I think. Well, let's just have a look. Okay, so, so I think these are supposedly the medium ones. And then they even gave us a tape and loads of bubble wrap. And then we've got, um, I'm not really sure what's the difference. I'm guessing. One is medium, one is large. Yeah, and then we also have these ones which are meant for books. Anyway, so that's my cat litter and um, yeah, lots of books there. So the house is a bit messy at the moment. Um, meh. So the cats are a bit, you know, I think they, they kind of know that something's going on. But, you know, they're still a bit unsure. Alright, so I'm going to start packing. I've already um, like vacuumed vacuum packed my clothes upstairs. I'm just going to bring them down and start dumping them inside the bag, inside the boxes. So hopefully this would free up some space upstairs and then I can continue packing and see what else I need uh, from the moving company. So if you take a large box, actually there's still a lot of space. I was quite surprised and that could fit like four, um, you know, vacuum packed bags. That's like about 70 by 50. So I've got one box of books down. In fact, that's the only box of books I have. I seem to have like given away everything else. So one of the first few things that I did um, with regard to shipping was to look for um, the company that did the best kind of um, you know service that was uh, required by us. So. Mainly were they good at packing uh, antiques, making sure that um, everything is insured, you know, um, do they have an ease of communication, are they a respectable company. And so I had um, done my research and um, sort of looked, uh, finally decided on three companies. So the first is um, AGS, which is, I believe, a French company. 
and that's a company that we went with eventually because my housemate he's French and his father had used AGS when he was moving um, from France to Africa and then back again so we had gone with that one based on word of mouth but the other companies that I had looked at was CM relocation as well as um, Asian Tigers so um, it was really a close call um, well, eventually we went with um, what we felt most confident in. But if I um, had my way and perhaps if I could redo it all over again, I might have gone with Asian Tigers because they would have brought the items um, directly into the Southampton port and that would have been closer to where we are in Bournemouth. Um, currently, AGS would um, deliver everything to London and then bring it down to where we are. Right, so um, shipping was, wasn't that complicated. Um, what you need to do is that before you ship your things to um, the UK, you needed to do something called the TOR, which is a transfer of residence um, kind of permit. So just go online and do that. It's really, really quick. Um, I got the answer within like a week, I think. So with that, then the shipping company can go ahead to do all the packing and um, for them to also um, proceed with the shipping, um, you know, the logistics and planning and all that. Yeah, so, well, for me, of course, one of the biggest fear was COVID because Singapore is much safer than here. Um, just in terms of I mean, when we came, when I landed here, it was it went the country went to complete lockdown mm -hmm. from like the the tearing. So that really frightened me because mm -hmm. Singapore has just entered phase three where you know things have started to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, for me, one of my biggest fears was you being homesick, where you basically where you'd miss your friends and family so much, and that it was so different here weather-wise that that would make it worse mm. because it can be as it is now very gray uh, and there's the, the sun doesn't come out as much in january and february mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to singapore where it's consistently like 25 30 degrees always sunny and if it isn't sunny for like, it's like raining for like five minutes and then mm. it's back to normal again uh so it's very different here mm -hmm. and i was worrying that, that would affect um sort of your emotional state more um it would impact the homesickness even more um and also i think it's like what james was saying about the friends and family it's really about a sense of identity because over here i don't have a job i don't have really anything to do so um i mean of course i i still have uh you know me writing doing my own stuff mm -hmm. but um i think what i'm i'm used to you know having income having friends and colleagues um, has been stripped away so that really um can be quite um unstabilizing destabilizing destabilizing yeah. yeah um although i say that but it's only been a week since i've been here so um you know um with the lockdown it is a bit challenging but um yeah i think we'll just have to it stripped all it. habit away like normality um mm. so you know you'd come you've come from having a normal life you know, living, going to work and then mm. going back home to your family and, and things like that. Um, whereas here, there's the normality is trying to find things to do during the day, especially when you don't have a job. Uh, so my normal, even my normality was stripped away, was, which was going to the gym, um, you know, before work, after work or when I'm on, when I'm having days off and stuff. And my day would be built around that. So if on my days off, I'd be up at 7.30 to go to the gym for 8 or 8.30 Whereas here, I don't have that. I don't have that habit to build my life around. And I think people are very much creatures of habit. So even for me, it's difficult. So for Ernie, it's even worse. Uh, so yeah.